Hello. Yeah, guys, I don't know what the hell is going on with this YouTube. It's horrible. Uh, trying to launch YouTube without StreamYard is just a nightmare. Because there's just, it, I don't know, there's just something wrong with it. It doesn't work for me. Never has. But I'm trying to use, I was trying to use YouTube because of limit on StreamYard hours. So I was tried it, but it doesn't work. So that'll be the, this will be the last time I'm doing it because it's a nightmare. <clears throat> so I hope everyone is doing okay out there this evening. And can you see me at all? See me and hear me? I just want to give me a thumbs up or something if you could see and hear me. Because I don't trust anything right now the way this has been going. <sighs> all right, cool. You could somebody can see me. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Anyway, so tonight I would like to just talk about a historical and historical mystery of a sort. And I'm going to light my little friend here, my little raven here, which I think is very appropriate considering what we're talking about right now. It's not really a spooky story at all, so... But it's mystery, so it's kind of creepy. And I think it's very fitting when you think about Edgar Allan Poe and what he did and his works, which were all beyond creepy. And probably one of our most famous American horror writers, actually the first American horror writer, quite a famous individual in his time and is still famous today, right? So um, it's kind of fitting that his death would be a mystery as well. People say that he's the father of the modern detective story. So maybe it's something he planned. His death would be a mystery that needs to be figured out. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the facts of what we know, and then I'm going to go over some theories because this is still an open case, so to speak, because there's been no conclusive evidence completely as to what caused him to die. But there's about seven different theories out there, and I'm going to go through them, and then I'm going to tell you what I think, and then you guys can jump in and share, if you'd like, anything, your opinion, as what you think was the cause. So let's start off with the background. On September 29th, 1849, Edgar Allan Poe, went on a trip. He was in Richmond, Virginia, and his plan was to go to Maryland and then go to Philadelphia and then to New York City. Ultimately, in New York was where he had a speaking engagement. So he leaves on September 29th, 1849. He gets to Baltimore. We know that much. But then he vanishes. He vanishes and doesn't turn up again until October 3rd, 7th. I'm sorry, October 7th. So he's, he's gone a full week. He vanishes for a full week. Nobody knows where he is. And when he turns up, he turns up in the gutter in a state that's not normal. It's a delirious state. He's all disheveled. He's beaten up a bit. And he's to just about totally incoherent. He's found lying in a gutter in front of a tavern in Baltimore by the name of Ryan's Tavern or Gunner's Tavern. Now, keep this, you know, keep that in mind because it's important later when we talk about the theories of what caused this. But he's found in that gutter. And he's found 
in disheveled clothes that don't fit him. They're not his regular clothes. It's not the regular suits he would wear. And he's wearing a straw hat. These are important fact, be, facts because they're going to they're gonna add to the mystery of all of this. He's found by an individual by the name of Joseph Walker, who is a typesetter for a local paper. And he recognizes Poe because Poe was quite famous for the time. Famous writer. Got a lot of accolades, obviously. And he tries to talk to Poe. He tries to talk to him and say, you know, can I help you? Is there anyone that I can get for you? And he says, Joseph Snod Snodgrass. Joseph Snodgrass. Now, Joseph Snodgrass was definitely somebody he knew. It was a, 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 a colleague that worked in the industry. And so what Walker does is Walker sends a note to my messenger. He stays with Poe the, on the street. Brings him actually into the tavern itself. Sends a note to Snodgrass to that he's in great stress. Please come and help him. We need to help him. So they do that. Snodgrass gets there and they proceed to transport Poe to Washington College Hospital in Baltimore. And like I said, he's in a tremendous state, a tremendous, a terrible state. He's delirious. And he remains that way for about seven days. And he's in and out of delirium. And he's attended by a doctor by the name of Moran. Now, Moran is important because Moran is the only person that really has access to Poe when he's in the hospital. Because strangely enough, they put him in a wing of the hospital, which is for either criminals or dangerously insane people in other words there's bars on the windows there's no visitors the only one that has access to him is moran and nurses so it's very limited who could see him or who could talk to him so we're going all the accounts of what happened in the hospital go on moran's account he's the only person there is now interestingly enough also interestingly enough there's no official record ever made of his condition no medical records ever kept now, that's on Moran. Moran was, by um, by all standards, uh, not a good doctor. He wasn't keeping records. He wasn't uh, consulting other physicians for help or anything like that. So Poe lingers on and eventually dies. Uh, I'm sorry, he dies on October 7th. I originally, I, I made that, I said that wrong. He's found on October 3rd. So he's 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 gone from the 27th of September to October 3rd. October 3rd till October 7th, he's in the hospital. So five days he's in the hospital and he dies on October 7th. Now, the official record states that he dies of congestion of the brain, congested congestion of the brain. And what that term meant at the time was either alcoholism or opiate abuse. Th those were the terms they used for that back in the day. Uh, well, let me hold on a second before I continue. Let me just, I forgot to say hello to everybody. I got so annoyed by YouTube. I didn't say hello to everybody, but thank you all for joining. Thank you. Arm distance, Emmanuel, Gianni, Paul C, Adam, Gina, Chris Toro, Ralphie, Edwin, Tommy Stiggs, I watch Don McHugh, co-train. I think I said arm distance already. Tammy C. A whole bunch of people came in and thank you guys. I know it was a screw up in getting it started with the live stream. So thank you so much for finding it and coming in and hanging out a little bit. And I hope you enjoy this, this little mystery and we'll see if we could solve it because I have my own, I have my own theory here. Well, it's one of the theories, but I, I I'll tell you why I think it makes sense. Big bones in the house. How you doing? <clears throat> Todd father. Hello. How are you? All right. So, so he's he's listed as congestive brain congestion of the brain and he dies. Um and there's a lot of things that happen after this that are kind of bizarre too. The only he doesn't have any relatives in the area that step up and deal with anything that who is death. He does a family, but he doesn't have anyone that steps up and speaks for him and writes an obituary obituary for him or 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 schedules uh services for him or anything like that. The guy that writes the obituary for him is a guy by the name of Griswold, who was a rival of his. And he writes this obituary, and it's kind of like a backhanded kind of 
comp compliments in there. You know, he says that he was a great writer, but also says that he was erratic and that he was, and alludes to that he was a drunk, that he was uh, prone to these fits where he would go off on a bender and all this stuff. So it's an awful obituary. <laughs> and then at the end, he says, we're all going to, we're all going to miss him. So it's, it's really, really a bizarre type of thing. So what happens? There's no autopsy done, no auto, no autopsy. So all you have in terms of the the official reason or the official cause of death is Moran's writings, which is just congestion of the brain. So there's seven theories as to what happened, how he died. He was only 40 years old. He wasn't someone that was... Uh, terminally ill or anything like that so this was completely out of the blue and kind of shocked america when it happened you know no tv no radio everything was about the print printed word so he was a celebrity at the time he was major entertainment for people and when this happened it was it was really shocking to the public to this happen so let's start with the theories now the first theory is Moran's theory, which is alcoholism. Now, some facts we know about Poe is that he did, in this in the past, have a tendency every now and then to go off on a bender. He would go and get drunk, and he was wrestling with a lot of demons in his life. Let's put it that way. He was born to a family that the father abandoned the mother, and then the mother dies right afterwards. Now, this is eight. This is the early 1800s. You know, that stuff like that really wasn't heard of back then. And then he's adopted by the Allen family. And that's where Allen comes from, where Edgar Allan Poe. A lot of people think that is his middle name. It's not. It's the, it's the name of the family that adopted him. So it's Edgar Allan Poe. And he doesn't get along with the, the father of that family. And... You know, so it's, it, he's he's kind of uh, rebellious and kind of un, unhappy most of his life as he goes through this. He writes, he writes these wonderful, entertaining stories, but it really comes from a dark place from his own experience. So alcoholism, glass. Now, I it's not highly likely. It's possible. It's not highly likely that alcohol did him in. Now, here's a couple of reasons why. Alcohol, he was known to be what some people called a wet brain. He only needed a drink or two to be drunk. He was, he, there was something about his metabolism, which would instantly get him drunk. So he did not need to drink a lot. And because of that, it was rare. He tried to keep away from the benders. You know, he, he knew the damage it would do to him in the sense that it would completely knock him out. So he had this in his family and it's, it, it was said to have happened in his family. Like his family, it was something about their body, their metabolism that they couldn't take alcohol. So this, you know, they'd instantly get drunk and be out of it. So, and now here's, here's an interesting thing about the alcohol thing. If he had, he also joined recently prior to this, the brotherhood of uh, the, Sons of, sorry, the Sons of Temperance, which is a group, an organization that was against drinking. And he did this a couple of weeks before this happened. So he, at that point, had already pledged not to drink and was actually advocating for not drinking. So it's possible he could have done this. In fact, the theory is, is that while he was in Baltimore, he met a couple of friends or acquaintances back from his West Point days. He had been a, a candidate of West Point and got kicked out the military and went on a bender with them. And that's what happened. But I don't think it's true. And here's why I don't think it's true. Number one, it doesn't explain why he is found in the gutter. If he was with friends, why did they leave him in the gutter? Number two, why was he vanished for so long? If he was on an alcoholic binge, he would have been, because of his nature, he would have been drunk immediately and it would have last it wouldn't have it couldn't have lasted that long. He would have been out of it immediately. So we he would have been found back in September, not in not on August 3rd. And then finally, the drunkenness doesn't explain the different clothes he was wearing. Different clothes, 
a straw hat. He was never known to wear a straw hat. He was never known to be disheveled. And he was never known uh, to wear anything but the best suits. He had a couple of, you know, that's where he would spend his money. He didn't, he wasn't a rich man because that was the nature of the business back then. They weren't rich. They, you know, he lived from piece to piece, the money by selling his pieces, his, his literary pieces. So he, um, so the, that whole nature of which he's found and he's beaten up too you know like how how did he get beaten up you know what would cause people to beat him up he was beaten up but he wasn't robbed you know he was and he had some money on him right so he wasn't like he was the victim of a robbery per se so i discount number one all alcoholism I, i don't think that that makes sense the second theory is rabies believe it or not now this is it's just possible it is possible that rabies, because rabies was quite common back then, and they didn't have a cure for it. They didn't have treatment for it. So if he had been bitten by an animal and attained rabies, they wouldn't have known what, you know, they wouldn't have known how to cure it, or they wouldn't even have tried to have cured it. And he could have fell into this delirium from it and eventually died. Now, this was a theory because, number one, he had pets. He had he used to keep wild animals as pets. Uh, I think he had a raccoon as a pet. So it's, or a, a, a raccoon and I think a squirrel or something. It, it's kind of odd. You know, he like, he was an odd guy. You know, you would, you would have to be an odd guy to write the things he wrote. But he kept these wild animals. And the theory is that one of them may have had rabies, bit him, and then it sent him in this delirium. But again, that wouldn't describe the different clothes. Why would you be wearing out um, larger clothes than you w- would wear? And where would you, what would make you get a straw hat? I mean, like just strange stuff. It doesn't explain being beaten up. It doesn't explain not being robbed. It doesn't explain any of that stuff. And I think they say some people fell into the rabies category because while in the hospital, he had a difficult time drinking water. But what I, I did a little research into rabies and rabies, it, it's not just a difficult time drinking water. P- the people with rabies will not drink water at all. They haven't actually have a, a phobia of water. They won't even go near it. So it would have been a lot more acute, the, the water, lack of water in the hospital, uh, if it was indeed rabies, you know, and no one, no one diagnosed rabies at the time either. Like I said, you know, Moran did not do that. Moran didn't diagnose for that. So rabies number two, I don't, I don't go along with. Don't go along with alcohol. Don't go along with rabies. Number three, it could be just the flu. You know, at the time, the flu was quite deadly. He could have gotten sick and ill from the flu, collapsed in the street. Again, doesn't describe or account for the clothing, that type of stuff. So I don't buy the flu. And... You know, there was no sign of a fever either. There was delirious. He was delirious. Um, and, you know, but not a fever. There wasn't no raging fever, which is very common with the flu. So, again, I don't I don't buy the flu. Now, the one, two, three. So no alcohol, no rabies, no flu. Poisoning, number, number four here, number, number four. Poisoning. And what they mean by poisoning here is carbon monoxide poisoning, Um, meaning it was common at the time. Remember, this was a lighting. That was a source of lighting. Gas was a They didn't have electricity. So a lot of lamps were, you know, were powered by gas and there would be gas leaks. And people from time to time would die from carbon monoxide poisoning. They wouldn't even know what's going on because they're so accustomed to having this for a light source. Now, this also doesn't work because there's actual concrete evidence that this one does not work. Because what happened was after he died, they actually took pieces of his hair and tested it. And and you can test the hair to determine if there's elevated levels of of, um, monoxide, carbon monoxide, to cause death. And there was not. It was nowhere near that. There were no levels of that. There was also... um, no, there wasn't enough mercury in there either. There was a little bit of mercury in there that, you know, a lot of times people say mercury could cause death, but there were some mercury traces in there, but the traces were minuscule. There were less than 30. They would have to have been 30 times more to cause death, right? So that was not an, an, a scientific option for his death. 
poisoning by mercury or by carbon monoxide. Doesn't work. So that's number four, does not work. Brain tumor, number five. Now, the brain tumor theory comes from the fact that he was known to have a lesion on his brain. Um, but it wasn't something that was known to cause him a lot of trouble. It wasn't known to be a situation where you saw his behavior deteriorating over time, which would happen in a brain tumor situation. Did not happen. You know, like I said, this is out of the blue. This event that causes his death is completely out of the blue. <clears throat> And the, the theory for the brain tumor comes from, because at one, it comes back from a time when they had to move his body. Because like I said, when he first dies, nobody steps up to, to help him. So he's kind of just thrown in a grave. He's thrown in a, in a, a cheap coffin and buried. Now, a few years later, fans get together and collect money and say, you know, let, we need to give him a proper burial. So he's dug up. He's dug up and he is put into a proper tomb. And in the process of doing that, when they exhume him, the coffin was so cheap, it falls apart. And the body kind of fell apart a little bit too, in the sense that the people that were removing him said that there was something knocking around in his skull. There was something, and, and people are saying that that was a tumor because a tumor, you know, the brain wouldn't make that noise, but a tumor might because a, a, a tumor hardens and solidifies over time. And then rocking the knocking around could be a tumor. That's possible. I don't know to that degree, but I don't buy this theory simply because it didn't it didn't happen. The, the, the odd behavior that would send him into this tizzy did not happen. No record of it. And that would which would would happen with a brain tumor. All right, so no brain tumor for me. Now, the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth theory is interesting. The sixth theory is murder. Now, this gets kind of interesting because it's a little bit sorted. Now, Poe was going to marry a woman uh, by the name of Amelia Shelton when he got back to richmond so what he was going to do is he was going to go to philadelphia get, get his his aunt uh well actually he was going to go to philadelphia tell his aunt the news tell her to come and you know for the marriage and then he was going to go to new york city do his she was going to go with him to new york city do the speaking engagement and then they were going to go back to richmond for the wedding so who's going to marry this woman by the name of amelia shelton now it was known that she had three brothers and these three brothers did not like Poe and didn't want her to marry Poe. So the theory is that three, these three brothers um, caught up to him, beat him up to the point that he was dead, obviously. But so how does it, how does that account again? How does that account for the disheveled look? the different clothing, the different hats, all you know, all that weird stuff, right? Where how does it account for that? Well, they say that Poe was hiding. He knew they were after him and tried to disguise himself and was in that get up, so to speak, when they found him. Now this is this is possible. It is possible, but there's no record of any of these three individuals ever taking credit for it. You know, and there was no you would think that someone in of the three if they really killed someone, you know, beat them up so bad, they would have bragged about it. They would have bragged about it. I would think they would. If you're doing this because you don't want someone marrying your sister and they you hate them that much, you're probably going to brag about it. You're going to tell somebody before not knowing that the, he would die, right? Because they left him. If they did beat him up, they left him there not knowing that he was dead. They were just beating him up to try to keep him from marrying her. So I would have thought they would have bar they would have bragged about that somewhere. There'd be somewhere, either a journal or a friend or someone would have said, yeah, these guys admitted it. So this theory is just kind of um, existing from people that looked at the circumstances after the fact and said, well, these brothers didn't like him. You know, they could have they could have beaten him up. And as a result, he could have died. But there's no concrete evidence to this at all. Nothing, no record of them going to the Baltimore None of that stuff. None of it, because the, the the brothers weren't there. The brothers were in in Richmond. So, it 
it doesn't make sense to me. It's far fetched, even though it's plausible. I think it's far fetched. So I, I don't buy the murder from the brothers anyway. Um, I'm sorry. They were in Philadelphia, so they were going to kill him in, or beat him up in Philadelphia, and then, and and then. So th- so if they if they were in Philadelphia and he went to Philadelphia, how did he get back to Baltimore? Because it was it was the path was Richmond to Baltimore to Philadelphia to New York. He never gets to Philadelphia, as far as we know. He only gets to Baltimore. All right. So so those are your the- those are your six theories. Now the seventh theory is. And I'll tell you is my is what I believe. The seventh theory is what I believe, and it's it has to do with something called cooping. Cooping, C O O P I N G. Now, cooping was a practice in the mid eighteen hundreds by political organizations where they would hire gangs to basically Shanghai people in the streets. And make them vote for their candidate. So they would find an individual, beat them up, or most likely they would find an individual, drug him, or or you know get them to drink a lot or drug him, and then convince them to go in to vote, and then come back out, and they change his appearance, and go back out and vote multiple times, right? And if you didn't comply with them, they'd end up beating you up. So. The theory is, is that Poe happened upon one of these gangs and fell victim to the coping scheme. Scheme. Now, this is why I believe this. Number one, it was election day when they find him. October 3rd was election day. And the place where they find him lying in front of the tavern was a polling place. That's where people were going to vote that day in that tavern. Now, remember, he's in a different clothes, clothes that don't fit him, and he's in a straw hat. So his appearance is different. So that to me, that's just if they were if they got a hold of him and drugged him or got him to drink or did whatever, sent him in to vote, came back out, changed his clothes, sent him in to vote, come back out, change his clothes, sent him in to vote back. Like this was common practice of the Democratic machines of the cities of that time. So it's very possible, and this is what I believe is why he ended up in the condition he was that he was drugged and beaten up to the point where he eventually ends up dying from it now here is the kicker to this and why i think this makes sense and this is something that people don't talk about much now while in the hospital I mentioned that he was in and out of delirium and he would speak to Moran sometimes. Sometimes he would be coherent. Sometimes he wouldn't. Most of the time he was incoherent. But one thing that Moran stated over and over again was that he would call out for Reynolds, the name Reynolds. Now, nobody knows for sure who Reynolds is, but there's several theories. Like there was someone who worked at the local paper whose happens name happened to be Reynolds. So that's Paul, you know, that could be it. He could have been talking you know, in a delirium about him. Uh, There were several Reynolds, but here's the Reynolds that seals it for me because Reynolds was the name of an election judge. Henry R. Reynolds was the election judge in the fourth ward polling place, which was Gunner's Tavern, where they found him. So to me, that seals it. He was the victim of a coop, of a coping scheme, beaten up. He knew his subconscious knew the the election judge there because of going in and out to vote and being questioned by the election judge. And um, he unfortunately, because of probably his lack of metabolism or ability to deal with either alcohol or opiates when they drugged him it did a tremendous amount of damage to him and put on top of that when he may have woken up from the stupor they beat him up and did damage to him left him there in the in the gutter and eventually because of improper treatment in the hospital he ends up dying 
So that's my theory. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that or if you agree with any of the other theories, but I'd be curious to what you think. That's my take of the situation. That's my little detective work. Uh, I think that's pretty prevalent. And if you ever watch Gangs of New York, which is a Scorsese film, it's a good film. It's about 1860s New York City. There's a part in that where they show you them, uh, gangs making people vote. And, and that's a good example of what could have happened to him. Now, this was Baltimore, not New York City, but the same practices were done in all the big cities at the time. So I think that's my best That's my best guess. Like I said, there's no conclusive reason or no conclusive evidence. And a lot of that has to do with Moran being a terrible doctor and not documenting everything. And then years later, writing accounts that were incorrect about the what went on with the hospital and things that he said and all that other stuff like there he was just a terrible doctor he didn't document things well and then he tried to make money off of it years later by writing books and he, he double backs doubles doubles backs on his and recants things so he's just a terrible terrible witness to what poe was going through at the time and I think his original timely account of Reynolds is, is credible, though, because it's it's timely. It's what it was soon right after it happened, right after it happened that, uh, you know, and where would he come up with it? Reynolds, if, if, if Poe didn't say it, where would this particular doctor come up with that? It's just it doesn't make sense to me. It, it would not be made up. He would not have the wherewithal to make that up. It must have been said by Poe. So um, that's my theory on that and my little detective work on this historical mystery and uh you let me know guys you let me know what you think um what uh what you think would have happened here yes johnny the five points yes exactly that's the area in the in the movie gangs of new york right that's right and um now here's another thing if this interests you if edgar Allan poe interests you there's a pretty cool movie by the name of The Raven with John Cusack. John Cusack plays Poe. And what it is, it's a fictional account of his death. You know, it's a fictional account of what leads up to his death. It's really interesting. And it's, you know, it's it's obviously it's fiction, but it's really interesting. And, and in that in that particular movie, excuse me. The cause of death is poisoning in that movie, and it's because of a murderer who was basically acting out and obsessing over his writings. So all of Poe's creepy and bizarre writings, this murderer was bringing them to life and then and ends up actually poisoning him at the end. So it's, it's, it's really interesting, though. You should watch it. It's really well done in the time period. It's, it's If you like history and historical pieces it's really good to look at the raven with kusak it's pretty good i don't know when the year it was i forgot the year that it was written or the year that it came out 2011 maybe something like that. i don't know it's not it's not a new movie it's it's quite old i think at this point <clears throat> adam there was no butler so you 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 lose on that one um Arlene, the, the Raven talked to him. No, the Raven didn't. This guy, this guy talks though. This guy talks to me when I'm not looking. When you're not looking, I guess. <laughs> Steven Morel Morinello, how are you, my friend? <clears throat> yeah, Johnny, I'm surprised that Burton never did that. I, I am surprised that Burton never created a Poe movie. It seems apropos for him, right? It seems like he would do it. It would be a natural thing for him to do. So that's that is surprising to me too. I agree with you. Yeah, laudanum opium, absolutely. During that time, things like that were very common, and it was quite easy to poison people. Um, what else is going on here? What do you, what else are you guys talking about in this chat here? Uh, Paul C. Did the did the rabies end up? Way opium addiction. Did the rabies end? I don't know what that means, Paul. If you're still here, I don't. I didn't. I don't get that. 
I mean, here's why the drug thing doesn't count because supposedly they they tested him for drugs, like they tested him for opium, and it came up negative. Now, I don't know what to what degree they could test. You know, so by the time they found him, my guess is the opium would have worn off. You know, the damage was done to him already, right? And then the, the actual poisoning may have worn off. You know, he's more he's more susceptible to that. It does more damage to him because of his metabolism than normal people or average people. So who knows? You know, they, they're testing for that came up negative, but it could have been so there could have been so little there by the time they get him to the hospital. You know, they don't know how long he was there. They don't know how long he was in the street or, you know, when, when or if he was poisoned, if he was poisoned, when, you know, and how many times before it wore off. My guess is it, it begins to wear off and that's when he gets beaten up because he, he fights back or protests and then they beat him up. So, you know, who knows? It's just, it's just really interesting and um, to me. Uh, big bones if he was drunk and took his beating how did he get a different clothes how do you get the different clothes how did he get how did he get these clothes that were too big for him and what happened to his real clothes and why is he wearing a straw hat he never owned a straw hat or, or wore a straw hat before so that that's the thing that that doesn't make sense with the just pure getting drunk and getting beaten up you know there's there, there's that makes no sense whatsoever to me why would he have different clothes on and they're not they're not clothes that make sense. They're not. They were clothes that were too big for him. Um, I think I had a description of the a more a more descript of the clothes he had on him. I don't know what I did with it. I thought I had that somewhere. I'd found that a good a, a good description of the dirty shirt, no vest. He always wore a vest. Dirty shirt, no vest unpolished shoes that did not fit shoes didn't fit <laughs> so i don't know how how you wear you know how would you go out with shoes that didn't fit you know it doesn't make any sense and if you were if you were hiding and putting on a costume like the theory about the brothers you'd at least have this your right shoes on because you have to walk around in them um a stain stained faded old bombazine coat pantaloons pair of worn shoes that didn't fit and an old straw hat that was moran's description at the time as he comes into the hospital that's the only the only thing moran records is when he comes into the hospital he doesn't record any of his diagnosis or any of his treatments until he writes the cause of death being basically you know alcohol poisoning And the whole thing is just so bizarre. You know what? They put him in a room where they can't have visitors. It, 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 if this were to happen today, you'd think like there would be conspiracy theories around it. Like, what the hell? Why would you put him in a room where only crazy people are? Right? You know how? How would you? Why would you put him in a criminal thing? He's not a criminal. Why would you put him in a bars on the on the windows and you know and not let anyone in there? It's just weird. Did he fall into a nasty puddle? And would someone change him? <laughs> I don't know why watch. I think you have um I think you have a a very positive uh positive view on uh, society <laughs> that they're going to change him if they find him in a, in a puddle. I don't know about that. <clears throat> um yeah, the medical records are lost. There's no medical records. Only the fact that the cause of death. That's it. Cause of death. It's just the cause of death written by Moran. That's it. There were no medical records. The The only medical record, I would say, if he, it's not a medical record. It's just an accounting of what he came into the hospital as wearing. That's, that's, that's it. And that matches the description of Walker. Walker and the other guy. Snodgrass, those two, those, so those three sources corrob corroborate the clothes he was wearing when he was found and brought in. So it's um, bizarre.
Bizarre to say the, the least. The dentist wrote the medical records. <laughs> um, yeah, Snodgrass, right? Isn't that, it sounds like a name that he'd write, right? <laughs> like, it sounds like a literature name. It doesn't sound like a real name. An old uh, and a big lady always doing laundry. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you're thinking of like a Dickens movie where the where the or a Dickens story where the this you know the maid or the seamstress is always has a giant thing of clothes that they're going to wash by hands. I know what you mean. What area? It was in Baltimore, and the time period was 1849. That's when he dies. Sylvester Snodgrass, yes, the third. <laughs> yeah, so listen, everybody's up. Everyone can make their own conclusions. I'm just telling you what I think is the, the most plausible one from me, plausible one from me. I don't know. I don't think the nose candy was a big thing back then. I watch. I, they had it in the cola. Coca Cola had it in it. I think. Well, actually, Coca Cola didn't exist yet in 1849. But um, yeah, so the nose candy I don't think was an issue. It's more the opium. You know, they go into opium houses and smoke. Back then, they were common. You know, you would go in, and usually they'd be administered by the in the Chinese section. Like Chinese immigrants would administer the opium houses, and people would come in and smoke, spend some time there, smoke, get high. And wait till they came down and then left and then leave. Yes, I watched the, uh, the yes. He didn't, he didn't make it to see the Civil War. The Civil War was the 18, 1861, 1865. Well, thank you, Gianni. Yeah, I mean, I always like these. And I, I like historical mysteries better because it's you know i like, kind of like to think about being in that time period and and it's also more challenging right to figure out what's real and what isn't over time stories add and cloud reality so it's really more challenging to figure out what happened Nobody noticed the same guy. No, absolutely, Big Bones. Nobody does. If you go back, nobody cared. Go back. You go go look at that movie. Go look at, and it's a good example of it, that it was quite a common practice. Um, it was all about rigging the elections. Very common. You know, read, um, you could read, I read a book on um, Boss Tweed in New York City. Boss Tweed, Common Practice of Tammany Hall. You can, you know, you can find it there. It's just what happened. Yes, this was Baltimore. I watched. Yep. Yes, rigging. Absolutely. Rigging the election early. Absolutely. In fact, in Gangs of New York, there's a point where the guy comes to Boss Tweed. Boss Tweed is a character. You know, it's he was a real person, but he's a character in that movie. One of his flunkies come to him and say that, um, you know, the the one guy that was running for sheriff that was Tammany's candidate was already ahead by more voters. More, they had more votes than they had voters. And Tweed said, just keep counting. Just keep counting. So that's the way it was. Corruption, corruption, corruption. It's in the cities, especially in the cities, uh, you know. I don't know about the rest of the country, but in the cities, that's how it worked. Oh, no, it's Baltimore. I watch. It's not England. It's uh, Baltimore. I mean, you know, I mean, it could be similar. It's the same time period as Dickens. You know, he grew up in the same time period as Dickens. So.
voting hats were often those straw hats. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yep. With a candidate's name on them. Yeah. Yep. Uh, barbers, palsy. Yes. Barbers were not, well, not surgeons. They were dentists usually. Barbers and de barbers were usually dentists in the 1800s. So uh, you're right on that, Paul. Yeah. You could see that in the old Westerns a lot of times. You'll have a barber that's also a dentist. It'll, it'll say both on the sign. Still no West at this time. Custer went down in the late 1870s. Yeah. Yes. Custer was killed in 1876 at Little Bighorn. <clears throat> yeah, Custer hadn't, Custer hadn't even been in the Civil War yet. That's where he made his bones, right? That's where he became famous as a general in the Civil War. Cut your hair, pull a tooth, and amputate an arm. <laughs> the old saying, po-faced, is that where it comes from? What old saying is that, Paul? I don't I don't know what saying you're you're referring to. Maybe I missed it. Yes, Poe went to West Point, and so did Custer, yes. Mm -hmm. Different time periods, though. Uh, Custer, um, Poe went way before Custer, I believe. They're both bad students. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You know, Poe was actually kicked out. Custer was the bottom of his class. Yeah, I don't know. There's like you know, like the whole Custer thing, and then that's kind of off topic. But you know, there's lots of uh, gruesome theories as to how he actually died, Custer, in that battle. Um, you know, there's the scientific evidence, but then there's also like accounts of how brutal it was. So I mean, that's another that's another whole story, not really a mystery, but it's a whole other you know discussion you can have on that. Oh, a snooty person's face was called a Poe face. Oh, really? I never heard that. Interesting. Huh. Okay. That could be. Could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah, so that's my uh, little story for this evening. A little trot back into history. On a cold case that will never be solved, actually. <laughs> There's no way to ever solve it. It's it's really up to what you believe at this point. One of those theories as to why, you know how he died and why he died. But, uh, I mean, who knows if he didn't, what he would have produced, what other works of art he would have produced. You know, but he was only 40 years old. He could have been writing for another 40 years. You know, I mean, imagine what he would have came up with. That's a shame when you think about it. And I never really knew this. I always, I always liked Poe, and I always, you know, the stories were always amazing. But I never knew the the death, you know, the mystery around his death until maybe a few months ago. I never even paid attention to that. And I just, when I came across it, I was like, this is fascinating to me that someone so famous at that time would die in the way he did and it would just be left you know he and basically he's treated like a bag a vagabond you know when he dies you know he's just thrown in a thrown in a cheap coffin and buried no one really cares is um whether a skeleton could be tested um i don't know I don't know.
Adam, you had Benjamin Franklin who lived to be 80. So you had people that lived to be 80. And that was that was way before this. A guy rides into town on Wednesday, left two days later on a Tuesday. A guy, oh, is this a riddle, Arms? A guy rides into town on Wednesday, left two days later on a Tuesday. How is that possible? I don't know. What's the answer? <laughs> arsenic yeah i mean well arsenic um i watch i think i don't think arsenic i see what you're saying but arsenic i don't think could have been the poisoning because there would have been distinct signs if that's what was used to poison him there would have been distinct signs that would have indicated that at the time in the hospital and there wasn't any as far as anybody said you know no one ever brought up arsenic as a possibility Of course, you know the answer, Adam. You probably is probably in one of your uh, back pockets there that you throw out there. You throw that riddle out there when least expect it. No horse's name was Wednesday. There you go. <laughs> or Tuesday, whatever. <laughs> whatever the horse's name was. Okay, you wrote in on him. I get it. You wrote in on Wednesday, left on Tuesday. Yep. Mm-hmm. But was the uh, other horse, was it a different horse that was named Tuesday? That's the, real, that's the real question, right? Did he leave on a different horse? The horse's ass. All right, Ralphie, thank you. <laughs> the Reynolds vo voting Shanghai theory sounds, yeah, I mean... You know how if it's if that's not if that doesn't work how what else does it what else works like what what else has some type of like logical link to it I mean anything is possible right any of those theories could happen but you know those the Reynolds being the judge in the actual fourth ward which is the tavern in front which they found him and the disheveled look and clothes and the shoes everything is just it's just too bizarre to be happenstance if you ask me um the one thing that's troubling or just what's surprising to me is that with that theory is that you would think that he was poe was famous enough that they would have left him alone that that a gang would have left him alone and not taken advantage of him but who knows? Maybe, you know, gang members probably can't read. So they probably didn't even know about his stories at that time. Most people, a lot of people didn't even read, didn't know how to read. So, um, so I guess that's probably, you know, I guess that's not really shouldn't be considered an issue because they probably didn't know who he was. If he was poisoned, we should still. I don't know how, though. I don't know. I, I don't know how. I watch. I'm not a you know a, a forensic doctor in terms of that. I don't. I don't know if you know with just bones. I don't know how you could determine that with just bones. I don't. Some poisons, maybe. Like I said, the hair was tested, and monoxide poisoning was not found, and neither was mercury poisoning. So the, you know those two were ruled out. Any marks on his body? No, just that he was beaten up in the sense that he had, you know, bruises on his face, you know, like beaten up like that. There were no no cuts or anything like that. Not that, not that I ever found. I never find any any account of cuts on the, on his body. We probably get more mercury now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. From the fish and such. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, Johnny. I mean, the the testing the testing of the hair though was not taken at the time of his death. It was after after they resumed his body. There was hair in the you know there was hair that was still there. The body didn't completely and fully decompose. And I don't know the exact time when they did the hair test, but it was years later. So I don't know how much science had advanced during that time. I, I really don't know. Yeah, no, no autopsy was done. Correct. No autopsy was done. And they do. They did do autopsies. Yes, they did at that time. Sure. But this is, that's another strange factor. You know, like why wouldn't, why wouldn't they do an autopsy on a famous person at the time? You know, stuff like that makes people think. Was there some type of conspiracy? You know, again, was there some type of conspiracy here? Why wouldn't they do an autopsy? Then it could be just something as people didn't want to pay for it. You know what I mean? Like he was, he didn't have money. He didn't have money per se to, you know, and nobody stood up for him. Nobody stood up and wanted to take care of him. That's which is so weird. You just let him, you know what I mean? And, you know, I know he didn't, he didn't have any kids. He wasn't married. He wanted to get married. And the person he was going to marry, her family didn't like him. But you would think that, you know, what about his aunt? His aunt, why didn't his aunt step up and, you know, do these things, demand an autopsy or I don't know. All just more to the mystery, I guess. Oh, the Italians. Oh, oh, in New Orleans, that's another thing, man. Well, that's, yeah, that's, hmm. that's, this is even before Italians. You know, this is, this is 1849. You don't get Italians until after the Civil War, really. So, um, but yeah, that's a whole nother story. I'm going to do a thing on, I'm going to do a thing on that on Columbus Day, just so in case you guys are interested. Actually, myself, Tommy, Stiggs and Thindu are going to do a Columbus Day special where we're going to talk about the origins of Columbus Day and the lynching of those Italians in New Orleans, where which caused it, you know, which were the origin of Columbus Day. That's where it comes from. Even Sicilians, Johnny. I mean, it, it didn't happen that early. There weren't there weren't Sicilians in mass here in 1849. That most of that happens after the Civil War. Late 1860s is when it starts. But this time the immigrant was the Irish. The Irish were the immigrant. In this at this particular time, the Irish were the immigrants. They were the invading uh immigrants that nobody liked. You know, Italians come later. <laughs> or Sicilians, you know, same thing. They come later. And uh So it's, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, everybody should know that everyone should know that. Um, black hand stories. Yeah. Black hand stories. Yeah. Yep. The black hand. Yeah. But everybody should know that story. If you don't know that story about the lynching, it's, it's horrendous. It is, it is horrendous. And, uh, it's important that everybody should know that. And they don't teach it in school. And it's it's a shame because they should teach it in school. The largest lynching in this country's history. The largest mass lynching in this country's history. Exactly. That's why we have Columbus Day. Exactly. Yep. Yep. But you know what's ironic to me though, Gianni, is that you know, and this is getting into another thing altogether, but when the Irish and the Italians come here, they're asked to come here, right? <laughs> they're asked to come here because they want labor. They need labor to build. They need labor to industrialize. So they're asked to come here, right? And then suddenly they're treated like garbage. You know what I mean? I just, I, I never quite understood that. I never understood that. You know, there was no such thing as illegal immigration. There really wasn't because they wanted people to come in, you know, and 
I never understood why people treat people that way. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, Adam, things are, yeah, things are, um, they say that the, you know, the victor always writes history. So, you know, that goes hand in hand with that, right? Uh, Paul C. in the 20, yeah, 20s, that's when my grandfather came here in the 20s. My grandfather's, my great-grandfather came here in the 20s, which is kind of late for Italian immigration. Um, and my, uh, and my, that's the La Vista side. The, um, my grandmother's family came here in the 1800s. So they're here a bit longer. Removing uh, George Washington, <laughs> Columbus. <laughs> it's insane, Gianni. It's just totally insane. It's just, it's totally insane. It really is. It really is. Um, Paul, see, so your your grandparents, your maternal grandparents, had their property seized, like they owned property here, and it was seized. How did that come about? That must be some story. Because that's late for that to happen in the 20s. I mean, I believe it. It's just terrible. Yes, arms. Exactly. That scene where they're coming off the boat. This document makes you a citizen this puts you in the army go fight for your country yep yeah adam i i get you i i certainly get you on that people want it to come here and they want it to be americans that's the difference right they they brought their culture with them and their culture was assimilated, right? They're, the the greater American culture took parts from all these different cultures, right? And, and it became part of a, being an American. You know, pizza became a uh, pasta and pizza and all that. You know, the food came, became part of being an American, right? And But the people that came here, they wanted to be Americans. That's absolutely, absolutely. Oh, your mother's grandparents. Oh, okay. Okay, Paul C. Got it. So your great grandparents. Now they're delivering food on unregistered scooters. Yeah, the natives, the gang, the natives. <laughs> the American natives gangs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Gianni. I agree. I don't know what to say to that, you know? I don't I really don't know what to say. It's um You know what I say? Don't vote for a democrat ever. There you go. That's what I say. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that subject. I don't know how anyone could vote for a democrat of any race, gender or I don't understand how anyone could ever ever vote for that party for anything. But that's me. You know, what do I know? <clears throat> exhume it again exhume his body i watch yeah well i guess we could and see what you know if we have the testing for the bones 
we could uh yeah i guess you could do that see what see what it brings up hi jj how are you good to see you oh, i appreciate it appreciate you stopping by you don't have to participate i just like uh, anyone who wants to stop by is always always appreciate it Sven Larson, how are you, my friend? Uh, Patty, yes, I will be doing a Halloween show. Yes, I'm going to do The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to do, but I'm definitely going to do The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And it, it's going to be cool because I'm going to talk about some of the reality that it's based on. So I've been doing some research on that stuff. And you're going to be surprised at some of the stuff I found. So it's going to be cool. You might want to, I don't know when I'm going to do that show, but it'll be before Halloween. It'll be just before Halloween, I guess. And uh, I think you're going to like it. It'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Yeah, Arm Distance, you're, you're right. Nothing, no one has done. I remember back in the 80s, I said, um, they need to stop all immigration. And get it under control. I, I remember saying this as a kid in the 80s. I said they should stop all immigration to be and then get a system that works and then open it up again. I, I that's what I said back in the 80s, and no one cared and no one did anything. So I, I hear you. Pit in the pendulum, yeah. That's a po yeah, the pit in the pendulum, yep. Yep. Yeah, Paul, see that um, just, you know, I'm, I think you probably know this, but um, the Tim Burton movie <laughs> Sleepy Hollow is nothing like the original. Uh, you know, it's a different. It's a it's a cool movie. I like it. I do. I do like that movie. It's just a different story altogether. And I guess you have to do that because it's the original legend, the legend is such a sh it's just a small thing. It's just a short. It's a short story. So I, you got to make if you're going to make a major motion picture out of it, you got to. You got to add to it. You got to embellish it. So I get it why they did that. Back to the square one. I wonder if there's intentionally done just like so many other hidden agendas and not conspiracies either. True facts. Hmm. Swelling and hallucinations. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, most of those are short stories. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he, I think he only wrote one novel, one actual novel. On right, chat, the chat's going pretty quickly now. I watch you say they go into those Dutch French soldiers in the movie. I don't know what, what do you, what movie you're talking about. I watch on. I don't I don't know which movie you're talking about there. He was no, he wasn't a Dutch soldier. I watch. He was a Hessian soldier, German, from the Hess, from the uh, the kingdom, the uh, the principality of Hess, Hesh, Hess, H E S S, Hessian. Close, close to, <laughs> close to the Netherlands, close to Dutch. It's a, and it's a Dutch, you know, the people that live there were Dutch. The people in Sleepy Hollow were Dutch, yes, because the Netherlands settled that first. New Amsterdam and New York, it was all, you know, that was all owned by 
the Dutch were there first. So the, the, the people in there were of Dutch descendants, Van Tassel and all that stuff. Um, but the, the, the Headless Horseman himself was a Hessian. Those Hessian soldiers didn't actually, I don't know about that, Gianni. <laughs> I don't think that, I don't think that's true. <clears throat> I never, I don't, I don't know. I've never heard that before uh, at that, during that time period, during the revolutionary war. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so, but I could be, <laughs> if you could show me where that is, I'll be happy to read it where you saw that. Yeah, thank you, Paul. See, if, guys, if you can hit the like button, I really appreciate it. That's really helpful to me. Thank you. Shows appreciation, you know, and 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 I think it does it does help the video get out a little bit to you know. Well, the the Hessian soldiers, from what I've ascertained, is that they were very very professional army, very strong, very. Um, very good fighters, very good fighters, very strong, knew what they were doing. Um, but some of them, some of them were pressed into service, you know, like they weren't all willingly there. Some of them were pressed by their principality, you know, that they had to, they had to fight, you know, and then King George hires them, makes a deal with the Prince of Hesh, Hesh and um, hires them. link for todd father i i uh, there's no link to this i'm 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 in i'm on um i'm on stream yard i i'm not on stream i'm not on stream yard i'm on youtube so there's no link like there's nothing that you can add somebody with as far as i know not in this stream anyway adam i see that there's 21 likes I, I don't know what that's all about. Like you see only three. I think that's what the likes were when you came into the chat, I think is what you see. So when other people like press the like button, you don't get it refreshed, but I see that there's 21 likes, which is great. So thank you all. I appreciate that. Toro, I um, what what I'm I'm missing something. A friend of mine said the same people were collecting for a child with cancer. Now they're over here from Route Nine, eighteen, working traffic at it. It's I don't, I'm missing something, buddy. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm missing something. I don't know what what that was about. So, Patty, you're back home from the hospital. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. If that's true, I know you said you were coming home. I hope you're home, and we're all very happy that you're you are home from the hospital. Oh, okay, Chris. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's completely fine. Um, yeah, so so Patty was in the hospital, had some surgery done, and it must be such a relief to be home. You know, that's just that is the worst when you're you know you're in the hospital after. That's just terrible. You just want to go home so badly. So so happy that you're home. Stefano, how are you? So I assume that this is like a coin toss or something that they're so they're collecting for. That's what you guys are talking about. They're trying to collect money for a charity. You'd be surprised how many. Wait, pa uh, Paul, you're talking about, wait, just conversing with chat. That would be make the Godfather streams better. Okay. Yeah, 
yeah, we can, you know, we, we can try to do that. We kind of get, we kind of get caught up in everything while we're, while we're going through the scene, but you know, we can, we can try to do that. Definitely. Oh, Sven, that's interesting. Hmm. The ski jumping. Yeah, yeah, interesting. But Adam, are these are these people no, I hear I know what you're saying for the you know the homeless just looking for handouts. I get that. But aren't these like or these are supposed to be like organizations collecting for money, right? Like I know in town our fire department does a coin toss. I'd be surprised how much money people they make from that. Just they stand at the stoplight. I mean, and they and people just take whatever change they have in the car and they throw it in. And you'd be surprised how much money they collect for that. No, no offense taken, Paul. Absolutely not. No, I I we want to hear what people want to see, right? That's absolutely. So. Yeah. I'm just trying to read some of the chat that I missed before. But, um. Yeah, you know what, you know what, Stefano, you guys, you know, a way to check on that, if they're doing that in the street, they have to have a permit. So you could call the town and ask if this is legitimate. Like if it's a legitimate charity, excuse me, and they are collecting money like that at a traffic stop, they need to get a permit. So you can call the town and find out if it's bullshit or not, because if it isn't, they'll get arrested, you know, like they'll get, or at least get broken up. They'll get, you know, so you might, you guys might want to do that. Well, have a good night, Gianni. Appreciate you got all the participating. I really do. I'm going to wrap things up anyway. Um, Oh, there's immigrants from Georgia or Ukraine. Stand really? Wow. That's bizarre. I wouldn't give them money. Why would I give them money? Why would anybody give them money? That's bizarre. Wow. Well, anyway, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping in, hanging out, chatting a little bit. I hope you learned something interesting. I hope it was entertaining. That's my goal. That's always my goal to provide you some content that is interesting. You know, I don't, I don't want you to just, you know, just hang out and have nothing to say. I want to have real content. And that's why, you know, I try to have, I don't go live every single day. I try to you know, do some background on the stuff that I talk about and I want it to be interesting. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I, I appreciate all of your participation. I really do. You guys hung out a long time, an hour and 18 minutes. That's great. I really appreciate it. 21 likes. If anybody could, hasn't done it, please like on the way out. That would be helpful to me. And, um, I have a wine tasting coming up on Thursday, a ghost story on Friday. I haven't put up yet godfather on sunday i'm gonna i'm thinking about my friday ghost story so we'll see we'll see i think i'm gonna do the new jersey devil i think i'm gonna do that anyway uh so anyway thanks everyone for joining i really appreciate it and as always thank you for stopping in here and spending time with me and I want to say, build the guild if you can. Like the like the like like the push that like button, whatever you want to call it. Smash it, like it, whatever, like this. And I want to say, God bless, and I wish you all the very best. Until next time, 
It is the Wine Guild saying, Buona sera, good night. Or buona notte, I guess, at <laughs> this time. Talk to you later, guys. Thanks again.